guys and welcome back to the channel so today we're going to be looking at the Oris H470 Pro XX gaming motherboard this is a 10th gen motherboard so it takes socket LGA 1200 let's uh let's open it and talk a little bit about it it is a pretty board very nice it's ATX which everybody can kind of guess that by the size of it Takes an 8 pin at the top and your standard 24 pin over here. Has two M.2 slots on it so that way you can run double the speed or run it in RAID or however you want. I do like how the two M.2 slot, the two, I do like how the two M.2 slots are down here together. I'd never really like it when the manufacturer puts one down here and puts one up here. I've, I've never really liked that so I like how they have them both together that's really nice also I noticed that the PCI Express or the graphics card slot is metal see that it's like a uh, a metal frame around it that's to help support because everybody knows that these new graphics cards that they come out with are just huge and heavy so having a reinforced PCI Express slot is very vital it does come with if you look over here on this side it does come with the io shield already installed usb 3 type c type 2 and this is for your wi-fi i like how it comes with the old school um, ps2 that's that's awesome um, you really don't see that especially on newer high-end boards um, has all your typical audio down here um, I think it actually has what they call their ALICC220 V8 audio IC chip, which is right there. That's their amp up audio chip. I like all the beefy capacitors and stuff in it. That's really good because good audio is key, especially in gameplay or just listening to music and stuff. Let's, uh, let's go over a couple of things real quick. Um, it's a 10th gen processor which we've already explained LGA 1200 it is the Intel H470 chipset it has a 3.0 times 6 PCIe Express which we already know about HDMI display port dual channel DDR4 4 DEMS it has 6 SATA 3 and it has 2 M.2 for SSD you can run them in RAID 0 RAID 1 RAID 5 and RAID 10 it has Intel's 2.5 gigabit LAN and it has their Wi-Fi AX201 chipset and their 802.11 AX wireless. On the back side there, like I was talking about earlier, it has USB 3.2 Gen with Type C, supports one USB 3.2 Gen 2, a Type A, six USB 3.2 Gen 1, and six USB 2.0 ports. Holy Jesus, that is a lot of USB ports. All right, this thing has fan smart so you can program your fans it has six temperature sensors that are built in around the board which is a nice feature it has quick flash bios so that way you can update your bios really easy it also has fan stop in it which i forgot to mention high-end audio capacitors which is what these are these are your high-end audio capacitors and that's your audio chip set right there at the bottom the dual M.2 slots, I love it. Um, unfortunately, since I bought this one used, it didn't come with the guards that come over the top here, but that's no big deal. I actually have my own that can fit there, so I'm not too worried about that. We already talked about the ultra 
design right here this is a nice feature to have um, especially like I was saying the graphics cards get huge and it puts a lot of stress on these ports so it's very nice to see one reinforced it has solar power pins so what they were talking about is that the thickness inside of those pins right there are a lot beefier and they're actually been um, liquid flow soldered which is a stronger type of solder that way you can not worry about damaging it pulling it in and out plus it can handle the amount of power that you're going to suck through this thing also if you notice that the vrams and everything have heat sinks on them that way is to keep them nice and cool and those are a beefy heat sink i mean look at the the size of it it's pretty beefy so is this one this one's pretty beefy as well you can always tell by if you got a good motherboard or not by looking at all the power chokes and everything on the side and on the top. All of that right there and all of this right here is forward power delivery of the CPU, which is very vital. Um, it has five fan headers on it, so you can hook up your fan headers all the way around the board, which is nice. They even have some up here to the left, which is good because when they when they put the fan headers in this board, they were thinking, okay, so where is all the fans going to connect and so you have a fan header here to run to the back and then you have the cpu and then another fan header to run for the ones on top and then they also have another couple of fan headers down here at the bottom of all the rgb pin headers right here they got a 5 volt rgb header and a 12 volt rgb header so that way you can use that they also have a quick flash debug which is what that button is right there you can push that right there and then it's a quick flash led debug which is a nice little feature. Uh, most of the stuff down here at the bottom, you'll probably never use or want to use. Um, but you have your power and everything set up right there, your grid pin array, which is nice. It's six SATA, 6.0, which is a nice feature. You gotta like that. All in all, I do like the aesthetics of the board. Now, the only thing that I don't like about the board is that there's not much RGB on it. Actually, I do believe that there's like a light orange line that does show up right in here, but it's nothing compared to like the Strix boards and stuff where they're just full RGB, you know. Um, this motherboard will run you around the 170 to, depending on where you can find it, 150 to 170 dollar range. Um, it's definitely considered a more higher end board since it's a 470 chipset. We're actually going to do a build in it here real soon. Um, we're just kind of waiting on some parts to come in. But they had this board for such a good deal. I think I paid 70, 80 bucks for it, something like that. That's not a bad deal. Um, it does have, where is it at? Right there. That right there is their 2.5 gigabit LAN. It's 2.5 times faster than the typical one gig LAN, so you have 2.5 gig, which is pretty much, that's that's more than enough than what most people have in their house, you know what I mean? Um, so that would work good. The Type-C header I really like, that way I can plug in my phone and whatever else I wish to transfer over. The BIOS chip, that's uh, the CMOS. CMOS battery is conveniently placed. Most of them are either down here or up here, but this one's actually kind of right in the middle. Um, also, I noticed that most of the circuitry, most of all of the stuff is on the outside of them. You notice how most of the boards, they'll have all this inside stuff filled up. Well, this one doesn't. You notice how it's real smooth and stuff. Like, there's a lot missing out of it. And I think that's because it looks like they put a lot of it around the sides and everything. Personally, I'm only going to get up to about 32. I'll never get into the 64 gigs uh, of DDR. That's just insane. I don't know why you would need that much unless you're, you know, video editing or something along those lines. Um, you know, I would have to say that out of all the boards, the aesthetic on this one is nice. It has a nice kind of flat jet black look to it. It's very, <clears throat> very cool. Of course, the cover comes right here and you can just pop that off. Make sure to pop that off and that will expose the socket but also do not throw this away. You want to keep that. Make sure to keep it. Don't pull a verge move and throw it away and say that you won't need this because I tell you what, you will need that. That's very important. If you have to 
RMA the board. If you have to send this board back to Gigabyte, they're going to want that cover. That's a good thing to know. Not most people know that, but yes, 80% um, of the manufacturers that I've dealt with when it comes to sending back motherboards, they always want this cover on the socket cover, which is a nice feature to keep and have. That is something that you definitely need. The advanced thermal design, um, I think that's the reason for a lot of the smoothness on the board and stuff. It allows the it allows the airflow to flow over the top of the board uh, and kind of position it correctly, which is what I like. I was just kind of looking at it and I was noticing, you know, that everything is along the sides and stuff. There's not really anything going on, which is something that you can actually damage. Um, I'm glad that they moved away everything from here from the socket because that's where you attach you know your block or your coolers at and sometimes you can damage them by fidgeting with them or trying to install it or something so I'm glad that they gave you plenty of room to actually put that in there which is nice you know it's a good board I'm happy to own it. I'm happy to have it in our collection. So I hope you guys like it. Make sure to leave a like on this video. We are going to do a build on this here real soon, but this was just a quick overview of it. I just really wanted to show it to you guys. I hope you guys like it. Leave a like, drop a comment, and I'll see y'all in the next one.